Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wilkie and I'm here with Zenrod. Hello. And this is Shonen Archive, the series that's dedicated to watching absolutely every anime through the history of Shonen Jump, starting with Gintama and also talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. And we will do this up until the end of time or one of us goes and then we are free from the curse of ever having to see the rest of it for the for having to track down and look down all Shonen Jump anime through the history of time. Today, we're going to finally be able to go back to Yu-Gi-Oh! GX after not being able to talk about it for so long. We'll finally be able to talk about it. So, uh, we should also mention that uh, this is recorded after the unfortunate news of... Uh, the passing of uh, Kazuki Takahashi, the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh! So, big, big dude in for both. If you, As we've said before, as we've said many times, me and Zen actually became friends through bonding, through playing Yu-Gi-Oh! So, Yu-Gi-Oh! Yep. is a very important you thing to us. You would not have uh, any of these programs were it not for Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, so, heavy stuff. And so we will continue talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! and having fun with it, but we f- I felt like it was good enough to at least mention at the front that of, like, hey, f- it, f- it fucking sucks that we lost him, and we thank him for everything Yu-Gi-Oh! related in general. Before we get into talking about some of the goofy stuff in GX, I figure, hey, bring up a little bit of the, the man who gave us so much to us, so. I agree. Uh, Quite a legacy, to leave behind, though. Yu-Gi-Oh! Mm-hmm. It's one of the all-time classics. Uh, extremely popular TV series, video games, manga, card game, you name it. Dungeon Dice, <laughs> one of mm-hmm. the greatest. Yep, Dungeon Dice on the fucking GBA. Is, was that a GBA <laughs> game? It was, it was a GBA game, yes. <laughs> yeah. They also released Real Dice. Uh, some also fantastic. They gave us the sacred cards, man. One of the greatest GBA games out there. Such <laughs> so a good much. game. I love that game. Yeah. You can, you can also see a full playthrough of us playing for Sacred Cards in very scuffed uh, uh, settings. And you can just hear the pure joy of playing this different form of Yu-Gi-Oh for us and interacting with all the characters. You can tell, you can feel the actual love for Yu-Gi-Oh in that series as it goes on. Because <laughs> it starts yes. with Zen Sacred going... Sacred Cards is fucking beautiful. Yeah, because it starts with Zen going, this is a punishment for you. And then by the end of the first episode, I go, actually, can I tell you the truth? I'm really enjoying myself. And then you say, I'm so happy you to hear that. <laughs> no, that game's amazing. And then they made that terrible sequel, Reshift of Destruction, which is awful. Yes, which we will not be continuing because we had to grind no. for Tristan. Maybe for yeah, a Yeah, you have to grind for hours to just, like, hit the base level needed to progress the story past the beginning. Yeah, no, thank you. Ah, but yeah, fantastic legacy is left behind, and we will continue to talk about it for the foreseeable future. So let's start with talking about GX itself. Episode 12, Zen. Oxygen plus hydrogen equals water dragon. Yeah, so this is a Bastion-centric episode, a.k.a. Daichi Misawa. Mm-hmm. Which, well, I guess we're watching in Japanese, so it's Daichi, a.k.a. Yeah. Bastion. I've made Whatever. sure to put down the Japanese names. Yeah. Uh, they're playing baseball for some reason, because they have, they sub gym class. It's the only actual class they have at Duel Academy other than dueling for some reason. <laughs> yeah. It's not like, <laughs> it's just dueling and gym. Uh, the two classes. Yeah. And so, uh, they're playing baseball, and, um, he's doing all, like, he says he's got the, he's done the math, and he knows how to strike out Jaden. He's Moneyball um, before Moneyball. Yeah, and so he he does strike him out, and then Judai comes in and uh, wants to go up against him, so he like intentionally screws up so he can get the chance. Um, Daichi hits a home run, and we get like a funny little comedic scene of it cracking Crowler in the face, uh, which is great because <laughs> fuck that guy. A, they get a callback to that later too. <laughs> yeah. Um. Then uh, Daichi becomes the next Kronos evil plan to uh, beat Judai uh, because Chaz failed 
Um, the Monjomi stocks all time low. It's literally it starts. Yeah, Monjomi stocks like, are plummeting right now. It starts with him saying, "I can't trust Monjome." He hasn't even done anything in the episode yet, and he's already being trashed on. Yeah, um, Chrono says that. Hey, I can't. Uh, I'm gonna have Monjome duel you, and then uh, the winner, like if if. Manjome loses, he'll get demoted to yellow, and Daichi will get promoted to blue in his place. Um, they, they Then you get like this whole weird exposition scene of Daichi being like, yeah, I wrote all the math on my bat, and then look at my creepy dorm walls that are covered in math equations. The dude lives <laughs> in the, the cell they kept Eggman's grandfather. Yeah, I was about to say, it's like a prison <laughs> cell. It's a nightmare. The um, prison cell from Sonic Adventure 2, if you remember that, that's Masawa's room, but brightened up. <laughs> that's the only difference, is that he has a window. Yeah, it's it's a fucking nightmare. Um, Manjome gets, uh, like, shitty messages from his evil brothers, who are like, we're gonna, we have to take over the world, one of us is gonna be a po- politician, one of us is gonna be an ace finances, and one of us is going to be a champion duelist, and those, that's the only things that's you need to take over the world. Thing you need. Which, to yeah. be fair, I'm sure Kaiba has two out of three of those. He has the money. He's not a politician, but he does own the dual world. That's true. Yeah, Kaiba's about as close as you can get. Could you imagine um, Kaiba the politician? Oh, if you, <laughs> you tried to get up on the stage and be like, <laughs> my opponent is a third-rate politician with a fourth-rate party. <laughs> What do you um, think we should do for the poor, said Okaiba? Burn them! <laughs> <laughs> we, make the, we make the bums duel for, for sandwiches. <laughs> this way they make them feel like they're <laughs> attributing to society. A dueling gladiator arena. Oh, I love uh, Senator Kaiba. He, he really brought home the bum <laughs> duels. Candidate Kaiba. Presidential oh. elector. Elector. Kaiba. But no, he was too focused on trying to get back revenge on the Pharaoh, so he could never go into the political game. So he yeah, has to unfortunately, do it. he couldn't start his political aspirations. Because mm-hmm. they always would bring up, "Didn't you lose to Yugi?" Shut up. <laughs> he has a breakdown on stage. <laughs> That'd be pretty good. Um, what happens? Oh, they're they're painting over uh, Daichi's shit yeah. on his walls because his room is a fucking like horror movie. Yep. Um. And so he goes and stays in Judai's dorm room, so they have something to, so he can, like doesn't breathe paint fumes. Um, <laughs> yeah, very good reason. They end up finding that someone had thrown uh, Daichi's deck into the ocean, and he knew it was his because it has all the writing on the fucking cards. Um, yeah, he doesn't reveal some of this until after he wins. Yes. Um. Judai accuses Manjome of throwing it in, and he says that he didn't. But then Asuka is like, yes, you did, because I totally saw you doing that. Uh, and he says, well, it was just my own cards. Um, you can't which then, uh, Yeah. And then Daichi rips his jacket open like a suicide bomber, and he has <laughs> a bunch what? of decks, uh, like a deck vest. Yeah, probably one of the most iconic shots of all of you, Yo Jack. <laughs> yes. Fucking deck reveal. Um, it's just fucking terrible. Uh, and so he picks a different deck. Um, and they duel, and they go. I'm not gonna detail the turns of the duel, but basically, uh, Daichi wins. Um, thanks to Water Dragon, because it's, it's like a science chemistry deck. Yeah, he has uh, oxygen, and he uses get on and hydrogen on. Yeah, to to create water dragon, uh, which ends up defeating Manjome, uh, and then he proves that it was his cards that Manjome threw in the water because the there was writing on the Vorse Raider. Um, so literally, no one else could have that on there. Yes, and then Kronos says, "Well, now you're an obelisk blue, like I said." But then Daichi says, "No." Um, I, I'm not ready to be promoted until I defeat the best first year, and that's Judai, so I want to duel him to earn my promotion. Mm-hmm. Um, Judai says he wants to duel right now, 
Bastion says no, he needs to build the perfect deck uh, after ruining all the painting they just did by writing all over it again. Mm-hmm. And you get this amazing shot of Judai and Daichi where they have like a, a tiger and a dragon behind them. Yes, the classic it's motif. so fucking funny. It's really good. I also like it. There's the reveal that when he says that uh, Misawa won with a test deck, you show Manjome, whose stocks are all time plummeted, going, "I lost to a test deck." <laughs> yeah, his uh, his stats are are rock bottom. Rock bottom at this point. He's he was already at the down low. He's now 100 percent gutted after the reveal that he lost to a test deck. Yeah, it wasn't even like a real like a main deck. It was just stuff that Daichi was doing for fun. Mm-hmm. So, uh, let me go over some of my notes here that I have here, some of the stuff I liked. Um, I did like Masawa's uh, weird Sonic Adventure 2 room. <laughs> I thought it, it the, maybe the, the horrible uh, math room? Yes, I thought it ended up going very well with his character, who is maybe a little bit over. It kind of goes to the opposite of what Judai is, which Judai is someone who plays by, like, I don't know, man, I drew, and I was going to win because I top decked Monster Reborn. But Masawa's like, I already knew that I was going to draw Monster Reborn next because I planned it from the start. Like, that's the difference of what kind of duelist they are, is someone who is very analytical versus someone who plays by feel. So I kind of like that, and they show that off very well by having them both <laughs> duel against the person that uh, have beaten uh, do, do, a person that Judai has beaten with Manjome, making Manjome at this point uh, basically a jobber, <laughs> an ultimate jobber. An Pretty really much, jobber. yeah. He he's done nothing but jobs since he's been introduced. Because mm-hmm. it's funny because they bill him as like the Kaiba kind when he gets yeah. introduced. He's like, oh, this this is going to be Judai's Kaiba, but then he just gets. Absolutely fucking shit wrecked. He's I actually just constantly. Yeah, he's actually Kaiba, but with like the win loss record of Tristan. Yeah, it's the it's 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 it's, it's extreme for sure. Because like Kaiba's thing was that he could only lose to the Pharaoh or to like the main bad guy. Because mm-hmm. I think his only losses are like to the Pharaoh and then the one time to Pegasus because Pegasus was cheating. Yeah, um, even in that one, it was because he cheated. Um, yeah, because he was reading his mind, so he he knew all of his cards. Yeah. Um, Manjome just like gets smacked by everybody. <laughs> he does. Um, I like the his brothers kind of talking about how they need the three pillars to take over the world: politicians, the banks, and the dual world. <laughs> Further showing yeah. that Yu Gi Oh is a hellscape <laughs> where dueling is as important as important as politicians who make the rules and the banks who control the money <laughs> you control the hearts of people by winning the dual world um this reveal that oscar's by the lighthouse is maybe my favorite returning bit that is not supposed to be funny but it's funny every single time where it seems like no matter what uh people keep going back to this fucking lighthouse to do some nefarious shit and oscar's always there <laughs> Yeah, she's always there looking for her brother. Yeah, she's always just there kind of going like, huh. And then she's like, yeah, I saw Monjomi throw that shit in the river because I was just there at the lighthouse. Nobody goes, what are you doing at the lighthouse? Why are <laughs> no- you always at the lighthouse? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no one tries to doubt her. They're just like, ah, she must be telling the truth. Bring it down. Um, during the duel itself, I really like how they show that Monjome is losing it because he's going super minus in every single play that he's doing and he's not thinking. Uh, like when he summons all his hell soldiers just to get powered up for one equip card, and then he gets immediately shit on by Oxygenon and uh, by Hydrogenons by an army of them because they are stronger than them, and Oxygenon gets showed up as well. Um, I, I thought I liked that a whole bunch. I like, uh, funny enough, I have some nostalgia for the Hydrogenon because back in the day, if you did not know this, a 1600 attacker that, when attacking, summons another 1600 attacker when it destroys a monster was super fucking good back in the day. <laughs> uh, Hydrogenon used to be kind of a problem. Not Oxygenon, not Water Dragon, specifically just Hydrogenon. <laughs> Only this yeah, guy. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, Water Dragon was never good, but no, and neither. Was there were some uses for uh, Hydra because Hydra Gaiden would like that. Yeah, that that field spawning ability was pretty good. Yes, back that, in the, the day. Yeah, back in the day, it was a very good effect, and I remember being very annoyed by how good 
he used to be. Because uh, you'd think, like, hey, why don't you just use, like, something with 2,000 defense? But back in the day, a lot of, like, effect monsters had very low defense. So uh, Hydrogedon could go by them pretty easily. And I think Hydrogedon's also a level 3. Uh, Hydro... No, he's a level 4. Never mind. But either way. He's still, uh, he was still a force to be reckoned with back in the day, so it was kind of nice to see him there. Uh, and you can actually see in this duel fully when he destroyed that one monster and then he could attack directly with, um, Hydrogenon. That's totally what used to happen back in the day, <laughs> is that the Hydrogenon would destroy the first monster and then the second monster would get, you would just be wide open for an attack, so that was kind of nice to see. Um, I have here in my notes, Monjomi might be the worst fucking duelist in the world. Because he keeps going minus and summoning his giant monster. So the, the giant monster he summons at the end, he can only summon by get rid, getting rid of every single card in his hand. And I just kept, I kept thinking back of like, why? why? Why would you pay such a stupid high cost for this? Because um, it reminds me of XYZ Super Dragon Ball Catapult where he puts all his eggs on one basket and he does the same thing here, but it's so easy to get rid of this monster, and he loses because of it. Um, I thought there was a point where um, Sal was going to tell him that you're washed up, because he says, Majome, you're all... And then he says something else. He gives him like some kind of speech, but I was really hoping he was going to say, you're washed up, because he was met metaphorically Yeah, because he got hit by the water attack. Yeah, so he was actually <laughs> legitimately washed up. Um... And then, yeah, I like that end bit with uh, between Judai and Masawa because it's building up for uh, a later duel between the two, which is pretty cool. And with it look, it, it's a nice, it's a, a very wrestling thing to do. Of like, we're gonna set up a future pay per view. We're not gonna give yeah, it to like you the, now. The promo battle. Yeah. Yes. You're, you're and it's funny because they it. don't, they don't give it for a while. Uh, it's yeah, not like it's the next episode. Yeah. There, there's no. more to go before they actually duel. Yeah, what's I kind of like that because it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, that was the best part of uh, original Yu Gi Oh is kind of like the waiting for it. Like, yeah, you could have you could have Yu Gi versus Kaiba early on, but it's much better if they kind of go through their own separate opponents and then when they do actually duel, it's like a big thing because you've seen them duel all these others and then they're actually having like a back and forth, which is kind of nice. So I'm looking forward to that. Actual That's why duel. Battle City was so damn good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You need that kind of stuff in there. I think you can't have a... Um, as much as it probably bothers a lot of people, you do need uh, kind of like... not. I guess the best way of saying it is kind of filler. Like, you need you need these other, like, duels of the day where you need these characters that kind of duel other characters. Yeah, it's not really filler as much as it's like... You have to know what... To, to build hype for any kind of duel, you have to know who the players are and, like, what their decks are and how they're going to approach a situation. Yes. Exactly. So, like, if it's just a random person dueling Judai that you don't know, you're like, whatever, like, why would I, why do I care? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You need you need that build up. It's very important. So, I ended up really liking this episode. I thought it was a good introduction for Musawa, establishing that he's very much a threat, and also the continuation of the downfall of Monjome stocks, which are continuously going down. We will do our stock report at the end, as we should say. <laughs> Monjome stocks, stocks in the trash. I can tell you right now that they could not be any lower. <laughs> he's bordering on. It's him and the ape monkeys all the way at the bottom. <laughs> at the moment <laughs> uh how you feel about it uh yeah it's a good episode daichi is one of the characters in gx that's that's unfortunate because gx has a ridiculously big cast like it's way too big mm -hmm. um and so there are casualties of the cast in this and unfortunately daichi is one of them um he pretty much stops being a thing um after a while but this early stuff is really cool with him they do a really good job of like building him up kind of like you said to be like judai's counter like opposite because judai is all about playing from the heart and like playing with uh luck on your side and everything whereas daichi is very much the every every little thing is calculated out perfectly my deck ratio is ideal and all this stuff <laughs> And Judai's not like that at all. Yeah. Uh, so their early rivalry is really good before yeah. he gets sidelined completely. 
Yeah, because our because you there are plenty of videos out there of us making fun of Bastion in general. Yeah, and so it's actually kind of nice to go back to the beginning of before. Currently, his stocks on the rise. There is going to be a fall, no doubt about it. But if you invest early yes. now and get out when the getting's good, you'll know. Yeah, he's uh, he's crypto for sure. <laughs> yes, very volatile, <laughs> very volatile. Yeah. Um. I did also like that he, it, it's very clear that he really loves that specific aspect of dueling of the discussion of it. Because he even brings up when he's late to the, the baseball thing, he's like, oh, yeah, sorry, I was in a heavy debate over <laughs> over deck things. <laughs> over, like, a specific arguments of it. He's like, he's out here being like, debate me. Debate me on your, your deck <laughs> ratio right so now. So are we saying he's dueling Ben Shapiro? Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's what we're saying. <laughs> He's saying deck um, balance doesn't care about your feelings. <laughs> if your cards are thrown in the water, then obviously you sell your wet cards. <laughs> that's that's what happens. You sell them to Aquaman. That's what you do. <laughs> oh man, that's gonna be real sad when we see his downfall. And there's gonna be a lot of unfortunate Ben Shapiro jokes. Yeah, there's gonna be a. Now that we've set that precedent, it's it's yeah. gonna be bad for old old Bastion. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Hurt the st- the stock on the rise but not for long. Is <laughs> it it looks like yeah. a heavy fall. <laughs> uh, and speaking of a heavy fall, let's talk about uh as what my brother called true peak fiction, the wild nature's release monkey duel. <laughs> yeah. So episode 13 of GX, uh Manjome decides to leave Duel Academy cuz he's been thoroughly humiliated by literally everyone several times. Um, we also didn't talk about his, go- his goons in the last episode had abandoned him. Everyone had been abandoning him. Yes, he's he's been turned on by his, his uh, squad. Yeah. And so he decides to pack his shit and go. Um, they end up going to look for him, I think. Because uh, Judai and uh, Sho go to try to find him. Yeah, uh, they, they end they... up bumping into... Go ahead. No, they go to sneak off by like leaving underneath a crevice, and then they are immediately caught by Asuka and her and her girl yes. gang. <laughs> Literally, like in one second, <laughs> it's Frame like not one. even. Yeah. yeah. Um. They're looking through the forest uh, to try to find him because they assume that he didn't leave the island because it's a fucking island. Mm-hmm. Um, Actually, they assume he and killed then... himself. <laughs> That's right. I forgot that they assume he fucking killed himself. Yeah, to show how bad I he's I forgot been. in the Japanese version, they're like, yeah, he probably killed himself. He's like, you don't um, think he would just, like, fall? And then Judai goes like, no. Mm, well, let's go look for him. <laughs> it's like, damn, um, okay. <laughs> then eventually one of Asuka's uh, girl gang gets kidnapped by a monkey who runs yep. off with her. Uh, Judai chases them down, and there's also some lab bike guys there. And it turns out that the monkey is a dueling monkey. Uh, yep. I don't remember if they keep the joke that his name he's named after Joey in the um. No, in the Japanese, Japanese version, version. He, he's called Sam. Okay, in the English version, uh, his name is Wheeler. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which is course. extremely fucking funny because Very they were funny. like, "Yeah, Kai has to make him the dueling monkey." Um. And they make, like, a big deal out of it. They're like, this is top secret <laughs> fucking science. <laughs> this dueling monkey. We taught the um, monkey how to duel. <laughs> yeah. And so they, uh, Judai challenges the monkey to duel to save the girl. Uh, the monkey says, okay. I don't know why. Um, they, the monkey wants the girl. They don't ever say. I think he's holding uh, them hostage. To duel. And then they decide. Yeah, well, here's the thing. I thought the monkey was looking for a woman because he's been taught to duel and just like most duelists he's lonely so therefore he needs a woman <laughs> and so he decides to kidnap her i thought that, that was always my under just understanding of it in the dub but apparently in the subs it makes it seem like he was holding her hostage because he knew that as long as he had her they wouldn't trank her and then he just kind of accepts judai's offer of because he says uh if you if we win you let her go if you win you can just go free that's the idea of it. That's the, the, the stakes he set up with this monkey. Uh, and the monkey okay. accepts. Yeah. yeah. So they uh, start their duel. 
Um, they go to Trank the monkey because he lets go of the girl to start the duel, but they're like, no, let's let's let them fight. <laughs> let them fight? <laughs> Which is let an actual fight. quote. Let them fight? Yeah. Uh, so him and Judai start their duel. They go through the duel, and the monkey's deck is based around DNA surgery to turn all of his... Um, Turn all cards into all of beasts. the monsters into beast type monsters, yeah. Because this poor monkey, um, there's not a lot of monkey cards, and Cybernetic Monkey is the only other monkey card besides Berserkerilla. <laughs> this poor fucking monkey. They've set this fucking poor monkey, monkey has up. no archetype. This monkey has nothing. This poor fucking monkey. They spent so much money on this equipment to make this monkey, and then they spent twenty cents on his fucking deck. <laughs> Yeah, he has like all this tech on. Like he's got a a helmet that has like a heads up display. He looks that like displays Mewtwo. life points in bananas. He yeah. does look like me too. Totally does. <laughs> um, they eventually uh, Judai wins, and the monkey releases the um the girl the girl as promised. They go to trank the monkey, and Judai tries to interfere. And the scientist is like, I'm evil. We're going to take every monkey. Uh, <laughs> because but his then, family shows up. Yeah. But then uh, the professor, the, the Slifer dorm professor comes and uh, says that he'll call the police if they don't let the monkeys go. So they yeah. leave the monkeys. Randomal control. And then they, Jazz is fine and he just fucked off. <laughs> they let the monkey keep the dual disc. Which is maybe <laughs> my favorite part is that the monkey gets to keep the dual disc and he's let off. He's going to go wild. teach other uh, that's what I want to see. If if this series <coughs> would, would a lot of people debate Yu Gi Oh and Yu Gi Oh GX, I'm gonna tell you this right now: there would be no debate if this monkey showed up later on in the arc after getting going through a monkey training arc of training the other monkeys, and he helped out with the with the with the big bad later on. If the monkey showed up <laughs> on his dual desk, the monkey army of duelists. Yes, are you kidding me? There would be no argument. I love the original Yu Gi Oh, <laughs> but if this fucking series paid off this monkey end where the monkey leaves with a dual disc where the monkey taught all the other monkeys how to duel and he has an army of dueling monkeys with him there would be no debate <laughs> the winner would be GX. i hate to break it to you that does not happen damn it no <laughs> such a shame such a shame we were so close to perfection <laughs> Because that, that was my hope, is like, oh, if the monkey returns, I think I'd actually get hyped for the monkey returning to help later on. So this episode, now that we're talking about it, here's some uh, goods and some bads. Uh, there's obviously no bads. This is uh, some great good shit. There, how could you not enjoy monkey dueling? Um, there's literally a part where, so where Asuka says, you're going to duel that monkey. And I fucking died. It's so fucking funny. There's a bit where the monkey talks, and the monkey goes like, Adora! He has like this super this monkey Japanese voice. It's so good. He summons Berserk Gorilla. There's a part where the DNA surgery, where the DNA surgery turns them all to beasts, so that includes Jaden's monsters. So Flame Wingman turns into a monkey. <laughs> and then when he summons Yeah, Clayman, they all turn into, like, monstrous versions of themselves, yeah. Like, yeah. Clayman looks like a werewolf or something. Yeah, he does. He looks very much like a, a mix between a werewolf and what would probably be a monkey of some kind. Uh, Clayman is the same way, which is the coolest Clayman has ever looked in his beast form. Um, the, the entire backstory of this monkey is amazing because there's this scientist just on Duel Academy who are experimenting on a monkey to teach it how to duel because monkeys can see duel spirits, um, which is an insane thing. This guy had to be la laughed out of the scientific field if he said, if we train monkeys how to duel they'll be good because they can see dual spirits. And then they go, what does that have to do with anything? And then his answer is, shut up. <laughs> I taught them how to duel. <laughs> uh, the they really, like, they, they focus so much on teaching a monkey how to duel, they never thought about <laughs> if they should. Because <laughs> the helmet has, like, <laughs> life points, and it's, like, in bananas. 
which is really fucking funny to think about like even the the monkey is being mocked even within the helmet he has to help him duel <laughs> where they're like oh yes if he attacks enough that means less banana it's like you're clearly putting the fact that berserkerilla has 2000 life points in fact this monkey has no idea how much life points he has he knows he has four bananas worth of life points what the fuck does that yeah, mean yeah does he know that the the bananas equate to 1000 life points each and if so why not just give him the number Yes. If he can comprehend what the number is. If he can comprehend that his Berserk Gorilla has 2,000 life points, you don't need to fucking mock the monkey and show him four bananas for his life points. Show him the fact that he, ha- uh, that he has 4,000 life points and you will help him much more um, in that aspect. Uh, there's a really funny bit where um, Asuka's friend is really scared and she says, Judai says, don't worry, I won't lose to this monkey. And in turn one, what he does is summon Sparkman in attack mode, set no face down, and turn. Which is maybe yep. the... F- I would If Val was that girl, I would have been so fucking pissed <laughs> if this is what this guy's bringing. You're going to save... This is what my, he's bringing to the table. Yeah, my entire life with probably... Because chances are, if he... if um. If Judai loses, then she's living with this monkey for the rest of her life. She's going to have to just deal with the fact that she's now attached to Sam for the rest of her life. And the first thing this man decides to do is set no face down and say, I think I can win with a 16 attack monster <laughs> face up on the field. It's bold. <laughs> it's very bold. Um, but yeah, and then when the monkey family shows up, I really like how evil this doctor is where he's like, he doesn't have a change of heart. He just goes... Ah, uh, yes, more monkeys for the monkey grinder. Yeah, he's, like, comically evil. He's like, yes, monkeys more. to make duel each other. <laughs> yes, more monkeys. In my inhumane in. monkey dueling experiment. So fucking funny. No redeeming the factors to this fucking doctor whatsoever, the scientist whatsoever. And then the part where Pharaoh shows up and kind of claws him at his face, I think it's pretty funny because you can see Pharaoh's balls <laughs> confirming that Pharaoh is <laughs> a male. <laughs> so fun episode actually i like that the beginning of this and then at the end you learn that uh Manjome is off the island as well because this is what it starts with i also like that beginning part of being like Manjome might be bad we have to kind of check on him um and there's a part where <laughs> when they're looking for Manjome in the forest they think the monkey is him and he goes uh Manjome, it's me Judai, you know who I am. You can go away from the forest. It's like, why is he treating him like this? Why he <laughs> he would know who the fuck like you are? Like he's devolved. Yeah, like kind of like he's treating him like a child. Um, Oscar shouts, saying like, "You can't just run away because you lost a fucking duel, you fucking coward." Which she doesn't think that he's uh, uh, taking care of himself by uh, jumping off of, to his death. She just thinks that he's being an idiot, <laughs> caring about two losses. Because he's only lost to two people. And to be fair, I don't know why people are giving him so much shit. One of them beat a teacher, and the other one is the number one uh, kid. The only reason well, he's it's in... it's weird. In, in this whole series, like, everyone just automatically always assumes that anytime Judai does anything, it's like a bullshit fluke. But, like, it doesn't make any sense because he literally beat the teacher at his entrance exam. He did. He's beaten so many people that at a certain point, you're like, the only person he's lost to is Kaiser, who's the absolute best person in the entire island. And at no point does he ever go like, oh, shucks, if I, I could have easily won that. He just goes like, ah, oh, damn. Like, yeah, at a certain he's just point. Like, good job. Good yeah. Game. Good game, man. Shit, you are the one of the best. I can see that now. Like, it's crazy the how little his he gets no respect from these fools. And I know for a fact that the obelisk blue people who are talking shit on Manjome would fucking get folded frame one if they actually ever dueled Judai. Yeah, but I, I don't know. Part of me feels like that's the, that, that's the point. Because they're, like, little shitty assholes. Yeah. But, like, they're all, like, the snooty rich kids who are like, I don't, I don't have to duel you. You're a little red loser. <laughs> and um, the red loser will totally beat them absolutely beat the shit out of them yeah yeah so fun episode overall i liked it and i kind of like the way that they're handling the leaving of monjomi as well it's kind of like in bit pieces as other stuff is going on how do you feel about yeah there's that? a lot of a lot of plot going on a lot of a lot of developments are happening mm-hmm. uh all at one time how do you feel about uh, it? is this is a this is a 
it's not a great episode. It's a really funny episode, though. Uh, yes. This is one of the ones where, like, you can't tell where they're blurring the line between, like, this is intentionally <laughs> stupid or this is, like, just a thing they thought up. Like, what uh-huh. the fuck? Why how is there much... a dueling monkey? Yeah, how much is the duel? And based off of some of the, 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 the duels that are coming up next, I think the dueling monkey might seem the less ridiculous out of all of them. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is the... So the very beginning of GX is like the weird era, where uh, there's a GX has a lot of like anime exclusive cards. Mm, yes. Um. Yeah, like I think um, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we we get to the tennis episode in in this episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, that guy's basically ninety nine percent of his deck is just made up. Yeah. Uh, for the purposes of having some dumbass episode, <laughs> so I don't yeah. know why they do it. It's crazy. We'll get into that episode later because oh my god, yeah. I have a, a lot of fucking notes on that guy. Because <laughs> holy shit. Um, <clears throat> but we'll get there. We'll we'll start with. Uh, but yeah, this episode is very easy to be like, yo, this is bad, but <laughs> also it's very enjoyable. So I think it can kind of go depending on what it's, your mood it's is. It's bad is. in a good way, you know. Yes, yes. It's I'll like say that. dumb. It's dumb as shit, but it's, it's very dumb. I'm there for it. There's like a monkey ska theme. Like, at a certain point, <laughs> a monkey skull thing will take you very far in my eyes. Ah, and speaking of ska theme, this next episode, very it actually uses music very well. It's Versus Jinzo, episode 14, or as they call Jinzo, Psycho Shocker. Yeah, so the Japanese Psycho name for Shocker. Jinzo is Shiko, uh, Psycho Shocker. Yeah. Great <laughs> um, name. I don't Who know how that j- translates to Jinzo. I think it's because Jinzo means Android. Because Jinzo number seven is called Android number seven. Oh, so, okay. Maybe. So they call Jinzo, um, Jinzo the Psycho Shocker. And then over here. I don't know just, why Psycho Shocker is like. Uh, needs to be edited. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe either. the word psycho, scary. <laughs> yeah, um, but anyway, so there, it's it's a winter break, right? It's a, it's mm-hmm. a holiday break. Um and for some reason, some fucking kids are doing, like, a seance in the dorm. <laughs> um, and they end up summoning the actual dual spirit of Jinzo. Um, and so he says he's going to sacrifice them to, to manifest himself in the real world. Um, because they didn't realize that he meant that he needed human sacrifices. So... Uh, Jinzo's doing like the thing from the first mummy where he's like chasing the kids and absorbing their fucking <laughs> life force. It is. <laughs> that is totally uh, yeah. what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. And then eventually um Jaden finds them and says that he'll duel Jinzo and he'll be the last sacrifice if he loses. So he duels against Jinzo in like this outdoor like power mini power station. It's like an electrical station. Mm-hmm. Um, they have their duel. Judai manages to defeat Jinzo in the end, and Jinzo fades away. Uh, and then there, everyone's saved from their Halloween haunt, from their their Christmas Halloween haunt, <laughs> thanks to Judai. Yes, every, everyone has a happy day. Uh, so to start with this one, um, I really like the idea of these kids summoning. Jinzo. So the last time I see Jin- I saw Jinzo, which is funny because um, previously in Yu-Gi-Oh, the last time you see Jinzo, he is a card that Joey uses. Um, yeah, he's one of Joey's best cards, actually. Yes, he is. He's in fact the thing that he's the best card that he got from Battle City that carries him. Um, if you don't count any of the millions of support that the legendary fisherman has gotten over the years, of course, <clears throat> Jinzo was the best for that era. Is better. It's ten times better than Insect Queen, and at least five times better in Joey's deck compared to the the Legendary Fisherman. Yes. Um. So it was kind of cool to see him back, but he's evil. It kind of reminds me of how they did Summon Skull, where there's another Yugi's card, except for this time he's evil because he's part of the Archfiend ar- uh, archetype, and this time Jinzo's just here because someone decided to summon Jinzo. Uh, I like it that when he asked for three tributes, they took it as well, we thought he meant like the card. <laughs> we thought like he tributing meant, like, monsters. Yeah. 
Yeah, I thought we didn't know it would be us. <laughs> we thought it would be that. And then I would say, you know for a fact Jinzo only requires one tribute. You should have known right then that you were. Yeah, in you go to time. dueling school, man. Yeah. You that should have been an immediate red flag. I would have said, but wait, Jinzo only needs one tribute. I guys, I think this guy's trying to screw with us. I think he's trying to mummy us. Yes, and just like the mummy, Jinzo has a disguise where no one else can see that he's Jinzo. <laughs> yeah, like a t- it's like a top hat and a trench coat. Yeah, which is the same thing that... And somehow um, no one is like, that's Jinzo right there. Yeah, no one can tell that that's obviously the Psycho Shocker android Jinzo. Um, it's great because he's wearing the same disguise that the Thing wears in Fantastic Four and <laughs> what Raphael does when he wants to visit the human world in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> this fucking long overcoat <laughs> and a hat. Um, a, like Plary the Platypus. It's like holy shit. It's a it's a tall tall dude. It's like no. It's actually Jinzo the Psycho Shot. Actually, it's yeah, it's Jinzo. <laughs> holy shit, <laughs> Jinzo. Uh, and then when they have their actual duel, uh, this really showed off the craziness that is Jaden's deck. Because Jaden's deck is filled with matches and trap cards that are, one, either require a very specific elemental hero and has to do a very specific thing for it to be of any use, which is the Clayman spell that he uses and the Bubble Man Bubble Blaster spell that he uses. Um, and then his other cards are like fucking Mirage and Nightmare and Solemn Judgment, two of the best cards for that era. Yeah, that's, that's kind of Jaden's whole thing, is like... His deck is absolute garbage because it's like this. Actually, is funny. It's in the the tennis episode two, and it's encapsulated by the fact that some of his elemental hero cards are so bad that they had to make fake cards to make them useful. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, um, they're terrible, and you know, dude, I plays a shitload of them. Um, and then the rest of his deck is like, yeah, the Mirage of Nightmare and uh, Emergency Provisions combo and, like, Solemn Judgment and Pot of Greed and all this shit. Yeah, crazy. Also that he can justify using Bubble Blaster in the deck. It's like, how do you even... How do you create a scenario where you even have these cards in your hand? And the answer is he draws, like, six cards in this fucking game. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's the thing, too, is, like, in in Yu-Gi-Oh! proper, like... You, you always assume that the main character, unless otherwise noted, only has one copy of their good cards. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a plot point in Duel Monsters that Yugi only has one Dark Magician. He does yes. not have more than one. Um, and so the, the assumption is that that holds true for all of them. Like, there's only one Neos, there's only one Flame Wingman, etc. So Judai has one copy, because he, he, you never see him play more than one of the same monster. If he plays the same monster two times, it's because he revived the same card. Yes, um, which is crazy. Yes, so that means that his deck is full of one ofs of all these elemental heroes, and then one ofs of magic cards that only work if they're also on the field. So it's like <laughs> fucking the the fucking math that goes into how lucky Judai has to be to get to play any of his cards is fucking crazy. Yeah, if Masawa looked at his deck ratio, I think he would die on the spot. Because, like, how do you win duels? How do you function? <laughs> this deck doesn't the best make part any is, sense. He has more than one Bubble Man-specific support card. He does! Because <laughs> he has... He's got the Bubble Blaster, and he's got the Bubble Shuffle. Yes, and then he has other Bubble And he's moves got the too. Bubble Illusion, so he's bubble got move. three Bubble Man cards, but only one Bubble Man. Neo Bubble Man, which we have not seen. <laughs> That's right, Neo Bubble Man. There's so many. Actually, I'm now I'm looking up Bubble Man cards, because there should be an entire archetype dedicated to specifically cards that just require Bubble Man. It's insane. Well, how there many are cards. like a shitload of Bubble Man cards. It's weird. Yeah, and it's like, why are there so many Bubble Man cards? He should have his own, like, um, sign thing and of stuff. Let me see. Bubble Man support. Let me see if I can type in Bubble Man support cards and see if I can find them all. Because I'm sure even they're not, like, 100% sure how many there are. Um, yeah, there's definitely Bubble Blaster, as we mentioned before. 
Bubble Illusion, Bubble Blaster, Bubble Shuffle, uh, Elemental Hero, Neo Bubble Man. And funny enough, the card you need with Neo Bubble Man is better than Bubble Man. You actually can't summon Neo Bubble Man in the base game because Metamorphosis has been banned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so not needed at all. The Bubble Rod... That's right, and he has his own special bubble rod, the bubble barrier. Oh no, that's that's the performer pals, never mind. But I would totally believe that it's a bubble man who needs that. Yeah, it's just I don't know what the um what the, the thing is behind Bubble Man. Well also, you know that the anime version of Bubble Man is better than the actual card, right? Yes, yes. It is. Yeah, but it's like for some reason they buffed good. the anime version of Bubble Man only. Yes, only because if uh, if there's no card on the field, you can special summon Bubble Man, and then you can draw two cards. Which a lot of people yes. who never play base Bubble Man, because the only way you know that they've changed Bubble Man is if you play Bubble Man. Because every time you try and activate the effect, your opponent will look at you and go, you actually can't draw two cards, because you have cards in your hand. Uh, and then you go, oh shit, <laughs> you're right, I can't draw <laughs> Yeah, cause, yeah. The the actual Bubble Man effect is like garbage. It's fucking awful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in the anime they made it better, I guess, because like, Judah is the lead character and he can't have a shit deck. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, they can't. But man. like, they can't like fight with the fact that they've created a card that is so bad and so specific they have to create scenarios in which bubble man can function correctly and you can win with bubble shuffle bubble illusion and bubble launcher and stuff like this I yeah actually... like mm -hmm. well i was just gonna say that, like Ju judah uses these cards like for a long time like in in late seasons he's dueling like the big bad of season three and he drops spark blaster and it's like your deck's not even built around the elemental heroes anymore. It's like a Neo Spatian <laughs> deck. And yeah, he's then still his deck running turns, Spark Blaster. And then his deck turns way worse because <laughs> he probably yeah, his deck actually gets worse than it is now. Technically, with the I fucking Neo Spatians. Yeah. I would kill for a one duel where Jaden bricks, and he's like, ah, shit, I got like burst return, bubble shuffle, uh, clay <laughs> charge, <laughs> all of them. Feather yeah. shot and spark and he's like, and he's like, he has like the deep omen. He's like, I just need to draw the right elemental hero, and he he draws the next one. And he draws a hero emerges, and he goes, "Shit, <laughs> that's not gonna help." Oh me. yeah. Also, hero emerges. Uh, every single time Judai uses it, it lands on Blade Edge. Oh yeah, whenever he has, and if he doesn't have Blade Edge, every like, single right time. Answer. No, I think it literally only hits Blade Edge. Like, I think that's a, a trivia fact about GX. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, I I literally think that when he uses it, um, he's using in, it so far in GX. It might hit. He might use it on Neos later on. I don't remember. No, but I, I so. know that like every time he uses it, it works. I know it never fails. Yes, that's that's one hundred percent true. He has never failed with a hero emerges. So far, we Blade Edge hasn't been introduced yet. So chances are he's not here yet. Um. So he has used Hero Emerges, but he gets, like, other cards that are actually in his hand that would benefit him and not just pure trash and stuff like that. Um, but I would 100% believe that he would, like, once Blade Edge is introduced, that fool is always coming up. Because that's the best way of get summoning Blade Edge. Yeah, because, well, that and Necroshade, which he also does later on. Don't distract me right now. Uh, <laughs> some big stuff is going on in Japuti. God, God damn it. <laughs> Fuck. Why do I have to like one piece? <laughs> uh, anyway, some other stuff to note because th there's a lot of stuff in this Jinzo. Here's my favorite moment from here. I'm going to say right here, after I started the Avion Get Shit uh, can, the, the list, Avion has had nothing but W's in these four episodes. And here's yeah, my favorite. Avion, <laughs> he used to be the whipping boy, and now he's like doing some some wild shit. Yeah, 
I would say he's, even though Bubble Man is a terrible card, at least in the anime, he's better. So Avion is by default the worst one. But in here, he's actually like whipping shit with Avion. So here's my favorite moment. It's the cover for this episode. It's when Avion with Ectoplasma looks like he has Avion in his uh, in his stand. Elemental hero Avion punches Jinzo. Yeah, because the soul comes out when they use Ectoplasma. <laughs> Yeah, so it just looks like Avion. I just also has like a... that they're using Ectoplasma again because that was one of the cards that uh, Bakora used in yes. the original series. That's how you know Jinzo's gone down a bad path is that he's not using machines, he's using Bakura's cards. <laughs> and I was like, damn, you've really changed, Jinzo. You went down a dark path. I also like when Jinzo summons himself, he goes like, I will attack with Psycho Blaster. Yeah, he summons himself, and it's like, that's me! <laughs> that's me! I attack! <laughs> Eat this! Well, yeah, because this is our it. first time, I think, really dealing with a dual spirit other than Winged Karibo. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he, there's also a really good line when Wing Karibo comes out, and he's like, do you have a dual spirit? And he's like, and yeah, unlike you, it doesn't require a tribute. <laughs> Which is both true <laughs> in the actual sense and in the actual game. <laughs> Wing Karibo would be absolute trash if he required a tribute. Um. Uh, some other uh, good stuff here. Um, <laughs> this is another case where I was like, at this point, I was getting a little bit annoyed with some of the things. One, there's a point where when uh, Jaden summons Rampart Blaster, he decides to destroy uh, Ectoplasma. And I was like, why would you destroy Ectoplasma? Because if he had literally attacked with it, he would just have won the game. I actually have a note here. Judai decides to throw the game because... <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of artificial dual enhancement in some of these yeah. filler ones. In, in this case, I was like, you should have not... You should have just, like, sacrificed it and then just destroyed him. It would have been instant. Uh, there's another part where Jinzo is the only monster in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! that has an equip spell that gives Jinzo uh, a weakness. <laughs> it is the only one. It is the... Uh, oh, his the, little helmet? The amplifier. So amplifier yeah. has it so that nobody ever... Use, people back in the day used Jinzo. Nobody ever used amplifier because amplifier basically let Jinzo be Jinzo destroyed. Jinzo was arguably the best card in the game for a while. Yes, he absolutely. One tribute, 2400, negated all traps and destroyed any of them. Yeah, because I mean, there were some people that were like, Summon Skull is the best card in the game because he's stronger than Jinzo, but it's like yeah. Jinzo negates tra all trap cards. Yes. Uh, uh, summon Skull can still be taken out by a trap hole and stuff like that. There's outs yep. to a Summon Skull. There's not a lot of outs for Jinzo unless he is the only The only out to Jinzo is that you already have a better board so you can play your Summon Skull afterward. That's it. Yes. Or you have... Or, a, like, or spells. I mean, you yeah, could, like, like Dark a, Hole him or something. A, like. a Fissure. But even then, you have to hope that the other monsters are gone um, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You have to have an out. Uh, Amplifier makes it so that a heavy storm or a quick play, uh, qu um, anything that destroys a match. Oh, right, because if you destroy Amplifier, Jinzo dies. Yes. <laughs> which is fucking which awful. Is, which is why Jinzo goes away. That's why you never played Amplifier. It's like a jokey card. Uh, so that's how they get rid of Jinzo in here is they get sort of Amplifier and then Jinzo was going to use Call of the Haunted to bring himself back. And then in the most fucking like crazy move ever, Jaden uses Solemn Judgment <laughs> to negate it. Yep. Fucking wild. And he summons forth the god guys and he, he like, oh yeah, I'm going to negate it. And this is the part where I was like, I can't believe the deck this man is running because I would have been angry. If I was Jinzo, I would have screamed, you run Solemn Judgment in this fucking Yeah, deck. why do you run fucking Solemn Judgment? <laughs> yeah, Jaden's deck is the poster child for, I can't believe you fucking run this card. <laughs> so yeah, happy day at the end and everything's good. Um, this episode is in another way, kind of similar to the monkey. I think this is worse than the monkey, but it's a lot more fun to make fun of. And there is some actual nice stuff. Like, I like that the music stops when Jinzo is actually winning. Because usually there's this heavy ska theme in GX, and this is the first time where they don't use it. Um, to kind of give more gravitas to this scary shadow game that's going on. I thought that was pretty good. I also like when the teacher... <laughs> Uh, the teacher's like, you study dual spirits, right? And he goes like, yeah, but I've never seen one. He's like immediately scared of Jinza. Yeah, he's like terrified of it. Yeah. <laughs> Which I thought was really funny. 
It was pretty good. So that's how I feel about it. How do you feel about this one in the Psycho Shocker? It's good. I like the, like, it's a Halloween spoopy episode. Um, in winter. Yeah, in, in Christmas time. <laughs> and just the whole concept of, like, the, the evil dual spirits. I, I like the idea of dual spirits in general. Um, I think it's cool. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, I like I dueling an evil one. Yeah, I like that they're they're more than just like a partner Pokemon, you know? Because Wing Karibo up to this point has basically just been like Judai's Pikachu. Um, yes. And it's nice that there are dual spirits that are beyond that. Yes, that is very nice. Uh, next. And it's funny, on. yeah, that he's mummying people. That's just funny to me. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good, that's a, a good <laughs> setup. In general, I would in, I would watch a movie where it was a horror movie where Jinzo was the main because Jinzo is a terrifying design, right? Yes, with his creepy face thing and like his brain like fucked up head. Yeah, and his like long triangle body, and <laughs> he kind of looks like you know how Di- the the Gurren Lagann um, mech looks like with the shades on. Yeah, kind of what Jinzo looks like in his body torso. <laughs> Is that he looks like the the mech part with the the glasses on it? Uh, so he's terrifying. So I would definitely watch a horror movie with Jinzo if Hollywood wants. If they're gonna give keep giving money to the Duffler Brothers to try again with Death Note, give me half that budget and I will make you a scary ass Jinzo movie. Oh, okay. easy, yeah, easy. Jinzo yeah. the horror movie. I'm about it. Jin, yeah, Jinzo, the psycho shocker. And then the final tagline is like, don't worry, I set up a trap, I'm fine. And then the person on the phone goes, you fool, he negates traps. <laughs> and then you see Jinzo completely ignore the trap in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> Just him. walks right through it. Yeah, imagine that. That would be so fucking good. Like, they set up one of those, like, um, a hole for you to fall in with spikes at the bottom, and Jinjo just completely fucking ignores it. That's my horror movie. <laughs> a The monster who can't use traps on at all. No, zero traps work on it. I will not explain it. Characters will just understand it and go like, oh shit, no traps work on him, okay. And then when I get feedback saying, everyone's really confused as to why no trap seems to work on Jinzo, and I said, that's his fucking effect. I don't know what you <laughs> want What do you want his effect? They can fucking like it. He's a psycho shocker. This is a weird android man shooting out electric balls <laughs> to kill people. <laughs> do we got any problems? And it's also voiced by Willem Dafoe, obviously. <laughs> I'm gonna bring of him course. back. yeah. Bringing it back again. Yeah, one more time. He's like, listen, I had my heart broken by Death Note. I don't know if I can do another anime movie. <laughs> Please, just look at the costume that you're going to be wearing. I'm going to be dressing up as Jinzo. Sir, you are going to have everything for Jinzo. <laughs> Got everything you need to be Jinzo. Let me just show you the costume. And he's like, yes. And then I'm going to have that fucking E! Entertainment Weekly of a full body shot of fucking Willem Dafoe. And it just says that Willem Dafoe is Jinzo the Psycho Shocker. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Let's get Willem it. Willem Dafoe is Jins. <laughs> Jins of Willem Dafoe. He's gonna win the Oscar <laughs> for his role as Jinzo, the Psycho Shocker. The pure gravitas that he brings to the role of the character. You really do believe that traps won't work on him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's go on to the final episode to talk about today. The Dual Tennis of Youth, which is the tennis episode. Oh my god, okay, so it's the fucking tennis episode. Um, this is a well-known, like, meme episode among mm. the people. Um, more than the monkey! <laughs> more than the monkey, yeah. Uh, I would argue it's worse than the monkey. Um, yes! So... They're in gym class again, because once again, those are the only classes in Dual Academy. It's gym class, and it's uh, dueling classes. Yeah. Uh, and Judai, rightfully, is like, why the fuck do we have a tennis class at a dueling school? Um, and this dude is trying to impress Asuka with his sick tennis skills. Um, he ends up hitting Kronos in the face, and Kronos is like, I'm blaming Judai for this, because why not? Um, and this guy thinks that, like, obviously, Judai's moving in on his woman. Who he's met for um, three seconds. 
Yeah, that he's seen for all of ten seconds. <laughs> Barely knows who she is. Um. So the girls, her, her like, uh, her friends, her girl, her girl squad are like, you should date that dude. He's hot. Um. And, she's and then she's like not into it. She's like, what? Yeah, she's not into him at all. Supposedly, this guy is like uh, on the same tier as like- Kaiser. Which is fucking the most ridiculous shit I've ever heard in my life. Crazy, um, <laughs> insane thing to but, say. But then when but, you yeah. think of his deck, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> Which I'll explain um, later. But yeah. it does. So make there's sense like a later. duel that they have, or like an agreement that um, the winner gets to date Asuka, which they totally make without her approval or input. Actually, it's in, just the ja- in, the, uh, in the Japanese version, they say straight up, we'll be the fiancé. Oh, they go all the way to fiancé in the Japanese yeah, version? Okay. Yeah, in the Japanese one, they yeah, say fiancé. Yeah, which they completely decide for themselves uh, in an extremely fucked up way. Um, so, <laughs> Judai is just doing that, like, I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about, but I want to duel, kind of thing, very Goku-like. Yes, this is the most um, Goku he's been in all the episodes yes, so far. Yes, he's been very Goku-like. And so he's all about it. He wants to do it. He wants to do it just to, for the sake of doing it because he likes dueling that much. Um, they they have their duel. Uh, uh, Judai wins. It's a fucking ridiculous duel. The dude starts crying and runs away. <laughs> and Immediately. That's it, basically. Yeah. I think it literally ends with him like screaming at the sky. Yeah, he's screaming at the sun. And he says, "I hate dueling." <laughs> because he lost and he couldn't be the fiance of Asuka. And then they, they have a shot of Judai saying to where they think it's going to be a confession. But actually what he says, what's a fiance? And then she goes, idiot. <laughs> she just goes, idiot. Yeah. That's her only reaction to this. Yeah, he goes, he goes pure Goku in this one. On it. But yeah, that guy, I'm like, well, it seems kind of intense if all it was was a singular loss, but actually the I, it makes a lot more sense if it, he actually thought that Asuka was going to date him or be his fiance. He's like, damn it, I had such an easy... Once again, from, similar to Sam, uh, to Sam, where I thought like the reason he wanted uh, Asuka's friend is because he was wanted a woman because he's uh, a person who plays Yu-Gi-Oh, so therefore he needs the companionship. He's very much similar in that regard. It's like, damn it, I just need love. <laughs> and I don't care how I get it. If I can win it in a duel. Any kind of better. love, as long as it's, I get it. Yeah, he took one look at Oski and said, I'm a duel man for this woman's hand in marriage. Forced hand in marriage. Yeah, without her consent. Nothing, yeah, so let's go. And then he has a mental breakdown and he declares it. Uh, so this duel, let me just put it out there. I'm glad to see that our boy Mega Thunderball got his cameo in because he, the one of the cards, Service Ace, which is the card that deals 1,500 damage if you guess wrong what card is in the hand. Uh, he uses it both times. He uses that card. The card in his hand is Mega Thunderball. So shout outs to our legacy. By uh, the way, <clears throat> fucking insane effect for a, a world yes. where you only have 4,000 life points. So yeah. This guy's fucking deck. I can. I, when they said he was on par with Kaiser, I said that's insane. The fucking tennis guy, that's dumb. But then when you see his deck, he runs multiple of this card that deals fifteen hundred damage. If you guess a fucking type wrong, that's stupid. <laughs> yeah. It's so easy to fucking KO your opponent if because because that's basically all he does. He only guesses right once with that card, and then he guesses right with the trap card because he's able to draw a monster with it, and then he has to get rid of either three cards from his deck or three cards from his hand, either one. But right there, he's dealt three thousand damage in turn two with the perfect starting hand. He could deal four thousand before the enemy ever does anything, which is an OTK or an FTK depending on certain things. That's crazy. This guy's deck is so stupid good. And then he has a card that says that the people don't lose if your life points go down to zero. And actually, the only way to win is that you have to attack twice. Yeah, you have to you have to win like it's tennis. It's yes. so stupid. Such a stupid card. And this stupid card only exists to show off Avion's fucking terrible feather shot move. The dumbass feather shot thing. Yep, yes. that's the only reason. 
that it exists. Yes, and Feather Shot is also worse than any of the Bubble Man supports because Feather Shot says that you can attack with Evil Elemental Hero Avion equal to how many monsters are on the field. But you can only attack with Avion, and it can only be to monsters. So only in this scenario, where Elemental Hero Avion is attacking a person where he has to attack more than twice, and he's fighting a monster that takes no battle damage, it can't be destroyed by battle. Only in these specific scenarios that they've built specifically for this card to show him winning with it. That is the furthest you could ever go with Feather Shot. It's fucking insane. Yeah, Feather Shot is... So fucking bad that they had to make this entire guy out of this, per, like just to make this card playable. Yes, and then like the this entire episode almost felt like a puzzle to figure out how the fuck you can work Feather Shot into a, a, yeah. uh, an episode. It feels like whoever created Feather Shot, they got the the here. <laughs> whoever wrote this episode said we want uh, Jaden to win using Feather Shot. Figure it out. And then he looked at the card and said, how the fuck am I going to let... <laughs> how? <laughs> this card's straight trash. So he then created this entire crazy tennis scenario, and they said, can this work? And they said, yes, of course, that's perfect. We'll make these anime-exclusive uh, decks, and perfect. Are you kidding me? Tennis, we love it. And he goes, oh my god, thank god that it doesn't matter. Because <laughs> it's so crazy, because there's no combination of cards in the real world in which Feather Shot wins you the game. It's just impossible. You'd have to be the worst. Yeah, player it's in not the world. a it's not a card that can win games. It it shouldn't yeah. exist, really. No, it's absolutely terrible. At least with the Bubble Man stuff, there's slightly more to it. With the Avion Feather Shot, you don't even want to play Avion, let alone attack with him a whole bunch. And he's also the only monster you can attack with. So if you have five monsters on the field who all have more than a thousand attack, you are wasting. You are wasting everything on Feather Shot. Um, the actually one good Feather uh, Avion card that is actually in the game is the Counter Trap that he has. And even then, I feel like they illegally use it in this game. Because the effect of the trap or the, the effect of the spell card goes through, and then Jaden's about to lose. But then he uses Feather, he uses the, the trap card to be like, actually, I negate it. And that's not how that works. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> No, it's supposed to be on the activation. That's usually how... It's supposed to be like Solemn, where you can't actually let them use it. That doesn't make any sense. Um, also, unless... fun fact, in the English version of this episode, mm -hmm. um, they change some dialogue, and they imply that they, they ship tease um, Asuka and Judai in the 4Kids version. Hmm. No. It's an interesting... So, in the, in the 4Kids version... Um, when ask when he asks what a fiance is, Asuka says it means friends for now. Huh. Uh, in the Japanese version, she just says, "You fucking dumbass." Yeah, which I appreciated way more. <laughs> where she just says, yeah. "Idiot, <laughs> fucking moron." This fu who's 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 boy is this? Unbelievable. Yeah, who's, waste of whose man's is this? Whose man is this? Not mine. That's for fucking sure. <laughs> Not uh, mine. Idiot baby child. <laughs> You're lucky you could duel well. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's funny. I wonder why. Actually, I do know why. It's probably because they wanted just a little bit more romance in there. It's actually kind of funny how little. There's actually zero romance between the two, which is actually kind of nice. It's the it's the opposite of uh, Taya in Yu Gi Oh, where Taya always has shifting feelings as to if she does not know if she likes uh, Yu Gi or a Tem until the end, where she's like, "No, it's a Tem," which sucks for, for little Yu Gi. Yeah, boy, that sucked. <laughs> yeah, that's that's unfortunate. Well, thankfully, he's probably got other dual ladies that he can go get. He can probably hook up with. He doesn't need Taya. He's the dueling king of the world, man. Are you kidding me? So many women will <laughs> duel women. <laughs> yeah, because apparently that's all you need other than politics and money. Yeah, exactly. Is um, <laughs> little Yugi could probably do it, but he probably hates politics. He could never. He could not survive a political scandal. <laughs> Kaiba would be the one. Is it true that you were going to declare attack on me and that would lead to my death? No. First of all, you put yourself in that scenario, <laughs> Kaiba. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, is it true way. you were going to launch me off of a fucking castle? Yeah. 
And he has like all the edited footage. He goes like, "Would you really vote for a candidate who would so hard even think about the idea of fo- <laughs> killing someone who was out there to save his brother?" It's like Yugi talking, and it's like the terrible chop of him, like different <laughs> saying different words. So it says yeah. like, "I will Declare. kill you, Kaiba." Ka- <laughs> Ka- Ka- <laughs> it's like horribly cut together. Yeah, <laughs> terribly cut together. <laughs> Smear campaign. So we have, uh, <laughs> we actually have the, the defender of it. We have a person here who's willing to stand up for the honor. His name is Junoichi. What do you have to say that his all his shit is terribly edited? It's like Kaiba the best. Why are you kick? He's like, <laughs> you can see the clock Kaiba. in the background go crazy directions <laughs> to show that he's been there for a while. <laughs> Every cut jumps like twelve hours. Yeah, he keeps cutting <laughs> over and over again. Then at the end, this this uh this po- political attack was sponsored by Kaiba Corp. Pol- political Kaiba, get it done. <laughs> I would totally be down for it. That's the next movie we need. Yeah, right next to Jinzo, the Psycho Shock of the horror movie, the political thriller. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yugi Moto Ghost to Washington. <laughs> Uh, that'd be great. But yeah, this episode uh, is very bad. <laughs> it's so mind-boggling, just terrible, the setup for it. There's some cool bits. Uh, like I said, I like seeing our boy Megathon. It's actually pretty funny that the guy's main monster cards are just ball-themed, because tennis. Yeah, they're just balls. Yeah. Um, there's a bit here with show, which is the best show's ever been, where show's like, um, running in place saying, bad time, bad time, bad time. And then the Oscar's friends are like, what's that about? Uh, and then he comes back and he goes like, okay, let me explain it to you real quick. We have this and then that happened. And so now he has to work for them and now you're all cut up. Okay, bye, bad time, bad time. And they go like, huh, let's go check the shit out, huh? (laughs) Which is the best show has been so far. Um... But yeah, this guy <laughs> fucking sucks. And I can understand the devastating loss of not being with Oscar, but at the same time, man, she would never deserve her. Yeah, this guy her fucking blows. He's yeah, the worst. Did not deserve her 100%. <laughs> he was not man enough to hold her. That's a true dueling lady. That's a lady who knows her way around a magic and trap card. That's someone who will counter your cards. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be a man. You need to be man enough. Gonna to negate that him. engagement ring. <laughs> She's gonna hit him with the negate. That's the person who will hit you with called by the grave <laughs> when you least expect it. <laughs> Oscar, hands her the engagement ring. She hands him back an ash blossom. <laughs> she hits him with an ash blossom. She, she tries to use his effect. She hits him with an imperm. <laughs> Oh man, he she nubbled and crossed out her his heart. <laughs> it's an intense woman right there. Uh, so yeah, that's this episode. How do you feel about it now that we've gone through it? Uh, yeah this this is a historic meme episode. It's one of the worst episodes in the series. Um, it it has its funny moments, but it's not it's not funny enough in concept, like the dueling monkey. No. To to get me to sign on to its absurdity because it's literally just fucking tennis. Yeah. Um, it's not like, it's not like it's a Prince of Tennis reference or anything. It, it's not like that clever. It's literally just tennis. That would um, be way funnier if this entire match was actually filmed like the Death Note tennis match. Yeah, or like if they if they had played it like a fucking Prince of Tennis thing, like yes. where it was made to be like a giant reference, I would be okay with it. Yeah, I think um, but it's not. Really it's good. just like, hey, look, tennis exists. Yeah. Um, really awful episode in terms of like quality, because <laughs> again, it has very few, if any, redeeming qualities. Um, yeah. but the couple funny bits are are funny. Yeah. I still think it's really funny that apparently this guy is is Kaiser level. Oh my this fucking, fucking God. dude! This guy with his um, fucking deck. He has to. Uh, yeah, there, there has to be. I want to see that duel. Kaiser versus this guy. Kaiser versus. Well, unfortunately, this guy never comes back. No, this but I, I, I want to. I want to see Kaiser's reaction of oh, this fucking guy and his fucking like bullshit cards. <laughs> his bullshit bird. Stupid cards. fucking tennis deck. Oh, I hate dueling this guy, but he's on my level. Unfortunately, that sucks. The only reason he got a win off me is because I gave up. <laughs> 
I didn't want to deal with this stupid deck. I refuse to play with these stupid deuce rules, so I just surrendered. This is just, yeah, I, you know, there's a thing called dual honor, and I don't feel it when I duel him. <laughs> I feel nothing but contempt. All right. So those are the episodes. Next uh, episode, we will talk about 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. But before then, it's time to talk about our stock evaluations. It's the most important part of the, the specific, specific only to the GX. Let's talk about some character stocks. Um, obviously, Monjome. We talked about him here at the front. Stocks all the way the fuck down. There's no... I don't know if it gets any lower than this. I would be surprised before we see a tiny dip up. But he's really just been... He's gone. He is getting his name out there. Funny enough, the episodes where they just mention his name and nothing else are the better parts of Monjome compared to when he's actually been on on screen and having to duel. It's a real fall from grace, for sure. Um, yeah. It, the, the, the stocks are definitely... Um, invest in Daichi, but then flip it quick. Yes. Because it doesn't last long. Uh, Monjome, sell, sell now. It's get, it's plummeting. It's a burning ship. <laughs> yeah, it's plummeting. Sell, um, sell, sell. Uh, the monkey, I think, is on an uptick. <laughs> I like that monkey. <laughs> <laughs> but funny enough, tennis all tennis is in a downward stock. <laughs> the tennis guy down. Yeah, the, the monkey yeah. up. I I think the tennis episode might legitimately be a bottom three one in the whole series, yeah. at least. And then after a dip, we have a tiny increase of Avion. As much as we shit on him, he is, in fact, the he did a lot of work in the Jinzo episode, and he's the reason he won the dueling tennis. So through a pure fuke, similar to how GameStop fluke, uh, fluked its way up to getting its stocks up, Avion has his stocks up currently. <laughs> yeah, Avion's got an inflated stock right He's now. currently got an inflated stock, so... If you want to kind of go to that, it didn't have the same aspect. I'm going to put a, a down on this on Sparkman. Sparkman was the one who took a lot of the hits in this episode. So tiny hit to the Sparkman. He just hasn't done anything. Elon Musk tweeted about Avion Coin, and so now a lot of people are looking into it. <laughs> exactly. Elon Musk has tweeted about Elemental Hero Avion in general, and if there's people interested in him. So. Stocks are racing. Yeah, exactly. But you know it's not going to last. It's just impossible for it to last. And that's the stock report for now. Uh, no change in the Jinzo stock. Still a beloved character, even though he was clearly put off to the job. But he came out still pretty clean in this one, so that's fine. Some of the other heroes haven't done enough. Clayman is still as solid as ever. <laughs> Might be the actual second best uh, e-hero in his deck outside of... Sp usually it's Sparkman. Uh, but I would well, say Blade Edge, if, by virtue of the fact yeah. that... If yeah, he can get on the field, it's, it's yeah. the best one. But of the ones we've um, seen so far, I would say it would, yeah. it would be Sparkman, Clayman, uh, Bubble Man, Brasinatrix, and then all the way at the bottom, Avion. I feel like with anime rules, it's got to be Bubble Man, because Bubble Man's actually kind of busted in the anime. Uh, you know what? I think that's fair. I'll, I'll say, I'll agree with that and say Bubble Man is number one. Because Bubble Man is, the, in the anime, Bubble Man is literally a pot of greed if you play him on turn one. No, you're right. You're right. You're right on that. So, Spark, uh, Bubble <laughs> if, Man number one. If Bubble Man had his anime effect, people would still play him to this day. <laughs> it's true. It's actually kind of crazy. That effect is crazy. It's it's enough to make you maybe think about playing Bubble Man if it worked like it in the anime. <laughs> yeah, if Bubble Man worked like it did in the anime, where literally you can special summon him because you control no monsters, and then if you do that, you get to draw two cards. So it's just a free monster and a pot of greed. Yeah. And and unlike pot of greed, you don't go negative. So it's better than. Yes, and then well, you Well, can... Greed isn't negative, but you don't spend one to draw two. So and it's a you... true plus two. Yes, and then you can link away the Bubble Man. He'd be crazy. Yep. And then... Okay, yep. so we'll put Anime Bubble Man number one, Spark Man, Clay Man, Berserk Avion, actual Bubble Man. <laughs> yeah, real Bubble Man is down there in the bottom. Okay, fair enough. And we will hopefully be back next week. I think this is releasing on Tuesday. So we'll join us next week if I, we see the next five episodes. We still have some... I think next week is the Tarzan guy and the Goblin King man. So we have some real other uh, duelists Oh my to god, go the, the Tarzan one is also a bottom three episode for sure. Oh um, man. But, but it does have some monkey episode qualities. 
where it's so stupid that it kind of wraps around back into being vaguely endearing. <laughs> All right, I I'm think pretty soon it. also we're getting to the episode where uh, Sho gets a hard-on for the dual spirit of Dark Magician Girl. Yeah, current, which current, is... I get the show stocks have not going down, but let me see. When we, when we get to that episode, either he will rise or we'll go back down. He, uh, you know, <laughs> it's Sho. He's a tiny, horny little gremlin. <laughs> He's again. Yeah. Show has serious gremlin energy. Like, yeah, it's bad. Like, like I said, similar to the monkey and this tennis man. There's an inherent loneliness to all duelists that require a woman duel <laughs> that will understand them. <laughs> and Dark Magician is definitely one of those. So we'll get into it. Join us next week. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace out.